How crunchy is that? <laughs> this is an ETA 6497-1 mechanical watch movement. And oh my gosh, it is beautiful. Hello, I'm Nicholas and I'm an industrial designer. Um, and this is the second episode of a series where I'm taking you through my experience of designing and developing a mechanical watch from scratch. So if you haven't seen the first episode, which I'll link in the description and there'll probably be a card up here somewhere, I recommend watching the first episode, at least the intro, so you know what I'm talking about and you know what this thing is and why it's so important. And this is the part of the design process where it gets a little bit glitchy. There are so many things that you have to think about. So I have to go from point A to point B. In between, there's this giant claustra of a path to get around all these different obstacles and limitations and barriers. It's the design process. It's iterative, it's messy, it's glitchy, it's all over the place. We have to try and make it as smooth as possible, which is incredibly difficult. I'm gonna focus on designing the parts, printing them on my SLA resin printer. If you don't have an SLA printer, I recommend going to Make Labs, which I'll leave in the description below. They use Foreign Labs printers, which are great industrial quality 3D printers. Um, I don't recommend that you use FDM printers because watches have very small parts and FDM printers, from what I've seen, can't get as detailed as you might need. Before I start doing some sketches and 3D printing, I want to remind you that if you want to follow along and make your own watch in a series with me, you can get this exact movement from rotatewatches.com and you can use code NICHOLAS at checkout for 10% off. Okay, let's start designing the watch. So a few things have changed since the last Design a Watch video. I've been talking back and forth with Sean Kelly, who's the lead designer at a company called Grove Made, and they were kind enough to give me a sample of the cork that they use for a lot of their products. And I love cork. So here's what I'm thinking. The top half of the watch casing can be made entirely out of cork, including the watch face itself. The bottom half of the watch casing could be made out of some kind of clear acrylic so that you can see that gorgeous engineering of the movement. So of course this is just an idea right now and the hard part is going to be figuring out how to secure the movement inside the case while not disturbing any of the gears. I figured out that there are a few holes inside the movement that you can attach some tabs and screws inside the bag that came with the movement um, to secure the movement to the case. But since these screws fit inside their watch cases, I'm gonna have to think of something different because I don't really wanna have to match the threads on the screws in CAD because that might be kinda difficult and I've never done that before. So. I might work something else out with the cork to kind of squeeze the movement inside the cork somehow. I don't know, we'll figure it out. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is basically just identifying areas on the front and the back of the movement that I can add pressure to the movement to keep it secure inside the case. And 
Obviously, there are so many screws and nuts and bolts and gears all over this thing that I don't want to touch because if I mess something up, I'm not going to know how to fix it. So, I took a picture of the movement on the front and the back, took out the background in Photoshop, added them into this sketchbook document, and now I'm just going to identify a vertical line across the center on both sides. If I add pressure right here, I want a line to go across the middle to add support on that side as well so that there will be there will be even pressure on the movement because if I put pressure right here and then right here there's a chance that the movements the movement is going to be off like on a tilt and I really don't want that of course there's a big area here but then on this side I don't want to touch any of that so that's not an option um, on here there's a uh, some areas right here and right here, but I don't want to get close to that little guy and then Obviously, I don't want to touch the mainspring at all. So I think just This line just this vertical line just so happens to be pretty Perfect. Um, it doesn't have to be like a perfect vertical line as you can see this I might have a pressure point right here slightly off-centered off the line, but honestly that might work. The movement does have these little holes. I might use those, but I don't want to have to match threads, especially because they're so small, but I don't know unless I give it a shot. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Okay, so I now have two versions of the watch case in Fusion 360. And I have the first version up just so I can show you my mistake. I didn't do any sketches before I started Fusion 360. I don't know why, but you should always start sketching before you go into CAD. That's like a product design, industrial design staple. That's a ground rule. You start sketches and then you go into CAD. And I didn't do that this time. And it shows because one of the biggest mistakes that this first mistake brought forward is that there's no way that this part can be made. Even in the prototyping stage, you're always gonna wanna be thinking about the constraints you're gonna have when you need to actually make the physical prototype. In my case, I'm using plastic, resin, and my 3D printer. If I was using cardboard or wood or MDF, I would have very different constraints to think about in the design process in sketching and in CAD to actually make the product. But anyways, uh, I have a second version in CAD. I just printed it. Um, it is on my desk right now and I'll show it to you in a second. But first, I want to talk about the design choices that I made. From the video that I watched from Rotate Watches, the movement already has pre-threaded holes. Instead, I'm going to use those threaded holes inside the movement as registration marks. And I will show you right now. So this is the bottom half of my watch case design. It has some pretty obvious defects. I just want to be clear that this is the first print, the first set of prints actually, that I did for the entire designer watch from scratch series. And uh, <laughs> there's some pretty obvious defects such as there are, there's some layer peeling on right here that you can see on the, almost all of the lugs. And that's my fault. That's because I just forgot to add supports to the lugs. Another problem that I don't, really understand there's a big layer shift just going across the middle of this part that was not intentional that wasn't in the CAD design of the second version and that's just a problem that I'm gonna have to solve I think it's a technical spec of the printer that I have to fix um, I'll just fix it in the next print that I do but I also just wanted to show you the CAD design of the second version 
just because this doesn't really illustrate much, especially because it's a failed print. I have two halves. Uh, the movement is gonna drop in from the top of this bottom half, and then this top half I'm going to screw on from the bottom. And that's why I have these holes here. And these holes are in the position of those pre-threaded holes on the movement from Rotate Watches. That's basically it, but it obviously, it failed. It's a failed print. The first failed print of the series. It happens. One last thing that I wanted to talk about is the fact that this is black. And I said uh, in this video that I wanted the bottom half to be clear. And the reason that it's not clear is because it's a prototype. And uh, for a while, I'm not going to make prototypes with the final materials that I want. You have to use quicker materials and cheaper materials in the prototyping process. Um, so that's why it's not black. And that's also it for this video. <laughs> if you want to buy your own uh, movement from Rotate Watches, the exact same one that I have, if you use code Nicholas at checkout, uh, you can get one for 10% off, I think it is. But anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.